Hey guys, today on Watch with Poppy, we are talking the latest episode of ABC Scandal. This is season two, episode number 11. So all throughout the second season, we've been getting these hints of what happened in Defiance. And we get that there was some like voter fraud that happened and that a lot of the people that we trust and know had something to do with that. So we've got a little secret circle of Hollis, Olivia, Melly, Cyrus, and Verna, and we know that they had something to do with rigging the election, but we don't know why. And I think that all along I've been wondering what would push Olivia to do that? She was the one that I really struggled with because, I mean, we all know that Cyrus will do anything because obviously, I mean, he killed that girl in season one. We know Melly is power hungry and everybody else, you know, kind of in the secret circle is pretty much out to get what they can get. But Olivia was always the one that I struggled to get why she would kind of get herself involved in this. This episode tells us why, basically. This is the episode where we learn why she said yes. So right off the bat, in the beginning of the episode, I mean, like, the first three minutes was just awesome. I'm just gonna say that, right? So Olivia walks into her house, and who should be sitting on the couch but Edison? Ugh. That's my Edison face. I'm gonna make my Edison face for you guys. The man just, oh, he drives me insane. So anyway, he's there and he's just full of accusations, basically. That's all he's got. Not flowers or chocolate, just accusations. So he basically accuses Olivia of sleeping with the president, um, lying about the president being alive, you know, all these things, which technically I guess are true, but you know, Olivia's not taking it. So he like throws all these accusations out at her and she comes back with this like countdown. Like she's got like five points. She's like five, blah, 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 four, blah, 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 three, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so she just like runs down the list. And this is of course where we get the episode title because Olivia tells Edison, like, look, basically in the last five minutes of our conversation, you've called me a criminal, a whore, an idiot, and a liar. So I think this is probably going to be the last time that we see each other. So I was very excited at that point because I was just like, get out, Edison, get out because I can't stand this man. And he tells her, like, look, tomorrow Sally Langston is calling together the cabinet and she's going to tell them that this letter is a forgery and so you need to come clean now, basically. Because of course, you know, in the last episode he was all like, I I will prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law, blah, blah, blah. So immediately Olivia is kind of like, okay, we've got, we've got a problem. So she calls Cyrus. So then we flash to the hospital where you've got Fitz and Melly and they're talking to his doctor and she's basically telling them some of the side effects that he should expect to experience. And basically this long list of symptoms are not good and they're not things that we would want a president to be dealing with while he's also trying to deal with foreign policy. But then Cyrus of course walks in to tell them like, look, we have a Sally Langston problem that we need to deal with ASAP. So then we flash to the Oval Office. Sally's there the next morning with the whole cabinet. And she's basically telling them the president's not ready to come back. And she has this letter that she wants the cabinet to sign. And I think it, basically this letter is going to override the letter that Melly forged for Fitz in the last episode. So as they're all kind of getting ready to sign this letter... All of a sudden it's like Sally's talking about how the president's not ready and then you see, you hear the door open and then you see everybody stand up like at attention and you realize the president is in the room and you turn around and there goes Fitz and he's basically like, good morning, sorry I'm late. So that killed that. But the problem is that Fitz can't just come back and be like, I'm back, bitches. But <laughs> Sally Langston actually has to sign a letter over to him. So the vice president actually has to sign power back to the president. And so Fitz realizes that he has to put on the show of his life. Like he can't just have come into this meeting and burst it up, but that means he's got to get out of the hospital and he's got to go back to work, even though he is nowhere near ready. So we flash back to the campaign and I think it's like 30 or 45 days before the election and Fitz is basically in trouble. He's down in the polls. Um, he's getting his butt handed to him in the debates and it looks like he is going to lose. And so the campaign's scrambling to kind of do what they need to do to kind of give him the lift that he needs. So all of a sudden there's this talk about his father, which is not something I think we've heard much about before, if it's his dad. But it turns out that his dad is a politician and everybody wants him to bring his dad in to stump for him and Fitz is really kind of against it. So you get that their relationship is strong. 
drained. Of course, dad shows up eventually and basically tries to take over. And you get that his dad is just not really a nice guy. His dad's kind of an ass, basically. But dad comes in and then, and the first thing he wants to do is start negative campaigning, which is something that they weren't doing at all. And Fitz really kind of gives in to his dad. You know, you get it first that he doesn't want him to be there. Like, there's this whole dinner when the dad first shows up and Fitz is just drinking a lot. And you, you just kind of get, okay, something's going on because he's basically drunk. And there's this whole scene with him and Olivia in the elevator, right? Where it's like the anti-sexy Olitz moment, basically, where he's drinking, he's been drinking, he's upset. And she's pretty much tells him, look, you're drunk, we will talk tomorrow. But he still, you know, wants to hold her and kiss her. And she's just like, basically like, the elevator's door is going to open and somebody's going to see if you need to stop, but he won't stop. And of course the elevator door opens and who should be standing there but... But Melly. So she freaks out and it's just like Fitzgerald. And she thinks, of course, that Olivia is going to quit because, you know, her husband is trying to like paw her in the elevator, not realizing, of course, that, you know, just a little while ago they had sex. Um, and she apologizes to Olivia. And you just get that Olivia is really uncomfortable because it's just like, stop apologizing to me because technically I'm having an affair with your husband. So I should probably be the one apologizing to you. So yeah, Fitz's dad comes in, really kind of takes over, and really changes him to some degree. One of my favorite scenes during the flashback was this kind of um, debate prep scene, right? Where you get that Fitz is like super stressed, and Olivia walks in on him kind of yelling at some of the campaign staff as they're getting ready, and she kind of st puts a stop to it. So she pretty much tells everyone, like, hey, you guys, thanks for your hard work. I'm going to send you guys home, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. And she tells Fitz, like, you, not you, you stay. It's just such a great scene, because it's one of those scenes where Olivia really kind of gets his head on right, you know, where he is stressed, he is out of it, and Olivia lets him know, like, if you are running for president, you need to know why you're running. And there's just this great moment where she tells him, like, you know, I finally figured out that you're the kind of person who wants to say the things that you think people want to hear, when in reality, people just want to know you. Like, if you just show the American people you, that's how you're going to win this election. And she says something to him, too, like, you know, like, I know you because you've shown me you know, yourself, so that that's what you need to do to the American people. You need to show them you. They want to know you. And it just was such a good little scene. I love that. And you could get that he was moved by that. And then later on in the episode, when his dad wants him to kind of do something kind of dirty, you know, Fitz kind of really takes a step to realize, what do I want to do? And what kind of campaign do I want this to be? What kind of man do I want to be? And he does what he wants, you know? And so I thought that was kind of cool. Now, of course, like I said, the big kind of backstory that we get in this episode is why Olivia would possibly say yes to the whole voter fraud, voter tampering type of thing. So you kind of see Hollis, of course, is the one to kind of plant this seed initially of, look, I just got to make a call and we can get these votes here, you know, that we need. But they all decide, look, we're not going to do this unless everyone agrees. And Olivia is the one holdout. She's the one who's just like, no. And of course, they're all trying to convince her that, you know, Fitz is, you know, this kind of once in a lifetime politician who's a good man. You know, they don't want him involved in any way, but they want him to win because they feel like he is just this like idealistic um, politician who would just be fantastic as president and they're really kind of willing to do anything they need to do to make him that. But Olivia of course keeps saying no because you know she's like it's wrong and why would I say yes to that? And what happens is all throughout the episode in the flashbacks you see the reasons why Olivia finally gives in and a lot of that just has to do with Fitz and his dad and who Fitz is and who Fitz is becoming and the fact that Olivia thinks that Fitz would make a great president and I'm sure part of that obviously is because she's in a relationship with him as well. So she loves him. And it's just like one thing builds on top of another until finally at the end of the episode she says yes. But it was just like so heartbreaking, even that scene. It just was kind of a sad thing, you know, as she maybe realizes that she's, you know, making a deal with the devil, which is Hollis, of course. But the thing I want to mention about this whole thing is that eventually Fitz is going to find out, right? Like, I don't know if that's going to happen this season or next season, but you get that the story is leading us that way. It's going to come out that this happened. Eventually Fitz will find out that it happened. It's such a melly move, this whole like election rigging thing. It really is. So it just makes me wonder what that's going to do to Fitz and Olivia's relationship when it comes out that she was actually involved in this too. So at one point too, 
two, you know, Fitz has this really kind of tough conversation with his dad where he pretty much tells him, look, I don't want to be you. And they argue. And then the next thing you know, Fitz is finding out that his dad is dead. He had a heart attack and he died. So it was kind of just like the sad moment. And there's this whole scene with him and Olivia where he's like outside chopping wood, which I just thought was random. It was just a heartbreaking little scene, you know, where he's just like, he ends up weeping in her arms, basically. So back in the present, where Fitz has been shot and is recovering from that, but he's got to work so that Sally will sign the letter, um, there's a press conference. He calls a press conference, and so Cyrus is just like, Olivia, you need to come in here and you need to tell him that he needs to not have a press conference because he's not going to make it through that. And so Olivia goes in to see him, and they have this little short little scene where, you know, she basically tells him, like, you, you almost died, don't do it again. And he's just like, okay. And he tells her why he wants to have the press conference, and instead of fighting him on it, she agrees with him. He does the press conference, and, you know, he has this moment where you're like, oh my gosh, is he going to pass out? But he just says something really awesome and strong, and so it's good. And then Sally signs the letter over to him and goes back to where vice presidents go. So let's talk about the ending of this episode, right? Because I almost lost my mind, basically. I'm in the house, I'm not by myself, and it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'm watching this show. And I, at this point, I'm yelling at the screen at the end. And I'm just thinking, I need to be quiet because there's people asleep in this house and they're all going to think I'm crazy or that I'm getting murdered down here because I am screaming at the screen. So the first bit you get is we see Olivia going back home and again, she walks in the door and who should be sitting on the couch but Edison. Why is he still around? Why, why, why? So Edison has come to say that he's sorry for all of the things he said earlier in that day. And the interesting thing is that Olivia listens to him apologize, but then she says to him like, look, Edison, I know when you're lying. So I, w I really wonder why she said that, but I'm not sure, right? Because his apology is followed by a proposal. So he apologizes for all he did, and then he freaking asks her to marry him. And i that's when I started screaming at the screen. Like, are you kidding me? Like, really? Like, I was just like, see, I'm screaming now. I need to be quiet. <sighs> Edison. So then we flash to the White House and Fitz and Melly are getting ready for bed. Fitz is like still broken down and looking like he needs a rest because he's been shot because he has. And Melly is just blathering on about politics and oh aren't we so lucky that you woke up and we've got lots of political capital now that you're awake. Your approval numbers have never been better. So she's just going on and on and on until finally she says to him like you know honey you really could get anything you wanted right now. And then she stops and she turns to him and she says, if you could have anything you wanted right now, what would it be? And he says, I want a divorce. <laughs> and I was not expecting that. Like, I was not expecting those words to come out of his mouth. But it was a shocker, that one was. So we've got a proposal. And then we also have, I guess we technically have two kind of proposals. One for marriage and one for divorce. So I guess we'll see where we go with that. This was a good episode. There was lots of like great Olitz moments. Um, lots of like kind of shockers, like I said. <laughs> lots of really great moments. Lots of great dialogue. I'm telling you guys, the first five minutes of this episode was so good. That scene between Edison and Olivia where, she, where he's accusing her and she's just like, uh-uh. I love that scene. So good. In fact, when it was over and I was done, I actually rewound it to watch it again because it was that good. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, I would love to hear what you guys thought about this episode. If you've got any tidbits or opinions about what happened, leave that in the comment section below. I will see you guys soon. Bye.